Hey Art Nerds! Today I'm going to show you guys how to paint a sunset. This builds on some of our other tutorials that we've recently covered. The flat wash, the gra gradiated wash, and the multicolor gradiated wash. So this is definitely an extension of the multicolor gradiated wash. Some materials you're going to want to have on hand are your watercolor paint palette, a cup of clean water, maybe a little ceramic mixing palette like this, and then you're also going to want, say, a flat brush. So, uh, you might want to reference a sunset. I always find that kind of reference is helpful, but I've noticed the main colors are an intense yellow, orange, an intense pink, and an intense purple. So we're going to be working with four colors today. I'm going to try to tilt the camera so you can see what I'm doing over there. We're going to add a drop of water, thus activating our paints to permanent mauve, dioxine violet, I, uh, let's see, which orange do I want? This one over here, whose name I forgot. And then we have a nice opera pink or um, an opera rose color. So very intense colors. You may also want your very tippity top to have something neutral and dark if you want to do that sort of a sunset. So we're going to also activate neutral, neutral tint, Windsor Newton neutral tint. You can also use indigo or you can use purple. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to grab some of my orange and also maybe some Indian yellow. And we're actually going to start upside down because we want gravity to work in our favor. And we're painting on Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper. It is a cellulose based paper. You're going to have better results if you use a cotton rag based paper. And I have a little um, eraser underneath. So we're going to start with our orange. And as I mentioned in the other graduated wash video, there's a few different ways you can do graduated washes. If you want more color mixing, then you're going to want to work wet into wet, color into color. So I'm going to demonstrate the other method where we use clean water and we may have to clean our water cup multiple times because we're working with a very limited amount of water for the sake of having enough room on the table and I'm just going to work my color down the page and I'm sure more traditional watercolor artists who may or may not be watching this are cringing at this and I apologize but this is what works on cellulose paper for me and this is definitely what works for my watercolor illustrations and my watercolor web comics 7 inch Kara so having a variety of methods, a variety of problem solving solutions on hand is always a good thing. I'm going to also grab a little more of the orange. I'm also going to grab a little red and starting at the top and my paper is starting to buckle. I'm going to brush some of that in and just work it down letting wet into wet sort of dissipate the color and I'm gonna let this dry or at least dry somewhat let, let there be less paper on less water on the paper and also switch out my water I'll just give you guys a close-up in progress view we've got a little bit of beading there on the side solution to that is a thirsty brush All right now that some of the water has kind of soaked in we're going to grab our permanent mauve and unlike in our other gradiated wash tutorials we're working very wet into wet and we're also working with very saturated color and we're going to brush that in move this down a little bit so you guys can see at the tippy top and we want to let gravity 
do its thing. Now you guys might notice I'm getting sharp lines in certain areas, and that is because the cellulose, pap the cellulose paper that we're using will absorb water at different rates. Sometimes that can be a good thing, sometimes that's useful, and sometimes that's really frustrating, and it is not the effect you want. Unfortunately, my camera cut out while I was doing it, but I went ahead and I brushed in another layer of permanent mauve, wet into wet, on top of my opera rose. And you guys can see we're getting a little bit of um, sort of in uh, inconsistent drying. I'm cool with that. I think it kind of adds to the sunset look. You might not be okay with that. That's why I'm pointing it out. I'm going to pick up some of that beading there over on the side using a thirsty brush. So while this is still wet, I want to go in with my dioxine purple. That's my really dark purple. And I'm going to brush this, oh, it, mm-hmm, there we go. Usually, I would use some bulldog clips or some tape and get this nice and settled down. So you guys can see it's not exactly blending. That's okay. We're going to grab some purple mauve, or some permanent mauve, and we're going to work that in there and oh we're losing our pink unfortunately my camera cut off when in the middle of doing a demonstration that really is unfortunate so I ended up adding a lot more dioxine purple and permanent mauve I'm losing a lot of my pink I tried to blend it out using just clean water I went and switched it out I am going to give this an opportunity to dry and give my phone an opportunity to get caught up and then we're going to add some more pink and adjust this so that we get a better color gradation because right now it's pretty striking but also right now as you can see it's sort of bleaching out at the top too much water is on the paper so we need to give this a chance to dry all right so this has had an opportunity to dry we're gonna go ahead and do a second pass on this you could opt to leave it like this if you like it but i want to work it a little bit further and just to give you guys a better perspective in general i like most of the blends a little bit better one of the problems with this is we're not really going to be able to tell how everything's working out until things have dried but I kind of want to go from that rose back into the yellow a little better so I'm gonna grab I think this Princeton brush is a little softer and starting in the mauve I'm gonna just work my way down a little bit better and then I want to clean up this beading on the side and like I keep mentioning if you use nicer paper than this you're gonna get a nicer effect cheap is not always good and then I think we need to let this dry in order to see what we've got and as this is drying it still looks a little rough on camera but I promise it looks a lot better in person as this is drying it's sort of coming together as I keep pointing out with cellulose based papers they dry unevenly so you guys can see we have some dry patches we have some very wet patches we have some bleeding and blooming going on again I'm okay with this me pointing it out is not me complaining about it but I do think that if this is something you want to control more or you don't want it to be an issue in your painting you need to be aware that this is going to happen on cellulose based papers like this Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper and prepare accordingly so this is not entirely dry but it is almost entirely dry the only thing I want to do 
is maybe add a really dark color to the top. And then I think we're just about done with this sunset. And I promise it looks a lot better in person. And I promise I have some other things to show you with this piece in the future.